behold, the G1000. My flight school recently got a 172 SP set up with the G1000 here, so uh, I was very keen to check it out. Note that for this video, I'm assuming you're relatively familiar with the procedures for the steam gauge version of the 172R slash SP, as I'll just be comparing the differences the G1000 makes. All right, so for the pre-engine start, your only big difference is this, your standby bat. All right. All right. So that's in case of the main battery dies, right? So you're gonna hold that to the test position for about 10 seconds. As long as it stays green, it's past the test and you can put it up to the arm and you'll see actually the main EFIS kick in as soon as you turn that into the arm position. What's the EFIS? Uh, electronic Flight Information System, okay. right? PFD, MFD. Okay, yeah, I heard those two terms, I didn't yeah. know the other one. Yeah, EFIS is like your overall oh. general term for, for a glass cockpit, right? Okay. So it took about 30 seconds for the PFD to populate all the various uh, sections. I don't know exactly what they're called, but you can see a bunch of things are blank there currently while it fires up. We took that time to play around with brightness settings to make it optimal for the camera. But in a real world application, that's probably a good time to brief your passengers before engines start. I also want to apologize for some shaky camera work occasionally with the DSLR. It's handheld on a bit of a long lens. Uh, I put in some freeze frames wherever I could to clarify things. Alrighty, so prime required. Fuel pump. Rich. Fuel pump. So it's just like the 172R. It's no SP. different, right? It's the exact same airplane, just with a digital display, right? This initial look at the G1000 for me was actually a bit of a camera test, but I was also curious to see how fast an experienced instructor could get through the start and run-up procedures, which I expected would be more complex than they actually were. And oil pressure is in the green. Mixture of the inch. Avionics on. So now when we turn the avionics on, on, you'll see this kick in. All right, so right now this is on a single screen display. You'll see all your engine instruments are up on the side. So once this kicks in, this will all these will move over to the secondary screen and your headset will work now. One, two, three, check, 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 yep. check. All right. All righty. Now that this girl will boot up. You'll see all the engine instruments disappeared and came over here. Like that, that strip there. Right, yeah. so okay. now, there's a lot of redundancies in this, right? So if for whatever reason this one dies, I can automatically do this, and it kicks it, it'll duplicate the screens over here, which actually is really nice for instru for us as instructors, right? Because I can pull that up if I if we're not using useful information over here. And that is red because why was that red? Because they had someone had topography on here, and oh. so we're less than a hundred feet AGL. So we're because we're on the ground, right? If you turn terrain on, what it'll just do is it'll show you uh, anything oh, that's basically less than 100 feet and then will show us red and anything less than 1,000 will show us yellow. You'll see your transponder's all automatic in this thing. So it's on ground, it's based off of your uh, ground speed. Okay. So I think the magic number is something like 45 knots. It uh, switches on automatically. So in terms of your instruments, everything's auto set with the exception of the altimeter. You'll see the compass already set, or the heading indicator automatically sets off the compass. How does it know the, what the compass is at? It's, there's a digital Fairly, thing in yeah. there? Yeah. traffic, but Charlie Quebec is lining up on two seven four circuit. The only thing I really am not a big fan of is basically the yaw indicator in terms of where your ball is. It's this little line underneath. You can see as I turn right, there's your ball going to the left. Yeah. Okay, so it's a little, that takes a little bit of getting used to. You'll see a lot of the a lot of the controls are both duplicated on both screens, right? Which is great again because then you can really control this airplane from the from both seats. Uh, the uh, the autopilot is a big part of this system. It has a really nice autopilot system in it. So you'll see up here on the top, Steve, is all our, your comms. Uh, we'll put her into the wind. All right. So basically, all the other controls down here are the same. Yep. But where it gets different is... Uh, you, you have all your, all your other controls are the same, but they're all in different spots, right? So here is the controls of the lights, all right? These are all your instrument panel lights. Here's all your exterior lights. And you can see you have a lot more circuit breakers. Yeah. A lot more electronics, right? This button's interesting. This is your go-around button. So what happens is when you hit go-around, 
You'll see the flight director on the PFD comes on, yeah. and you'll see GA pop up. Oh, it says it right up there in the green? Right. In a go-around situation, you apply full power, you hit your go-around button. The idea is we put this little tuck into the into the pink, and that should be ideal. So run up. Run up. All right, so brakes, blast area is clear, mixture is rich. Throw to 18. Now, when we go to 18, you don't have to stress out too much about hitting 1800, right? We don't get that fine-tuned in, in, in the S and the R. You know, I'm at 1810 now, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Right? Now that we have a digital readout, you know, we as pilots particularly, we have this instinct that it, better, it has to say 1800, and it really doesn't, right? Because I'm sure when we're saying 1800 in the steam gauge, we're not at 18 on the dot. Uh, brakes are holding, oil temps, uh, temps coming in. The green pressure's in, well, the green. Check, check. Left. We lost about 100 there, maybe 110. I do. Oh, uh, great mag, about 100 as well. We're still within its 125 tolerance, so we're fine there. Alternator. So, look down here as I turn everything on. Right, you'll see your amps readout, and you'll see your electrical. Right, so. We're still have we have a slight charge on the main battery, a slight charge on the standby battery, and we're showing 28 volts on it. All right. If I kill the alternator though, you'll see the main battery is now showing a discharge. The standby is not because it's not drawing from the standby because the main battery is still providing a charge. But the other thing is we're showing 24 volts here, right? Because it's 28 volt system but a 24 volt battery, and you can see on the main PFD I'm getting a low volt warning now. Turn it back on, goes back up to 28 volts, now I'm showing a charge again, so everything's happy. Uh, mixture EGT, right, so here's our uh, EGT, here's our fuel flow. If I pull on the mixture, I'll see a drop in fuel flow, and you will, there the EGT goes, and there's number two on there right now. So what that means is it, it's showing the number two cylinder, it always shows the highest cylinder, right? If I want to get really, you know, in depth, I can actually look at every individual cylinder. I go to engine, and lean, and now I'm seeing all three cylinder, all four cylinders, sorry, and you'll see two's highlight as it's giving the overall readout of 1400 degrees. And down here, you can see we have a cylinder head temp, so the hottest cylinder head is uh, number is number four, which okay. isn't uncommon. That it's one of the back cylinders, right? Because I won't have the same cooling as the front ones. And here's your fuel flow. If I put it rich. Right, and fuel flow drop in uh, EGT. Everything's working happy. Check the idle. It's there and idle's nice. And then we're done. That's the run up. That wasn't so bad. The thing we have to understand is it's just another 172. Just because that's funky screens, right? Now, I'll show you some of the systems here briefly. So if we want to look at, say, the uh, flight management system, that's basically where we can put our flight plan, right? So if I look on my screen, I hit flight plan, I see just get this little flight plan screen, which is sufficient to set up. Now, alternatively, if I go to the, the, the MFD, if I hit flight plan, I get a much more in-depth screen, right? Because they you don't they don't want to pull this all this off your main screen while you're flying. Right. All right, so we could put a full flight plan in here if we wanted to. If we set the uh, autopilot up to GPS mode, it'll actually fly for you. Yeah, it's pretty awesome for cross country, that's for sure. Yeah, and it's great for high fire. Yeah. Now you'll notice all our speeds are already programmed in here, and that's because as I approach, say, 74, there will be a little Y there, right? That tells me that's my best uh, best rate. Best rate, yeah. Right? Same with glide, my rotate speed, my my best angles all programmed into the already in there. And then as the tape on spools, it'll be it'll be moving along beside Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. The other nice thing is as on an approach, I can load my minimums in. So as I come down on my approach, it'll verbally yell minimums. And if I don't have the runway, overshoot right there. Right. right. So the entire idea of the G1000 is to reduce workload and make it easier on the pilot, right? Obviously, look at the attitude indicator. The entire screen's an attitude indicator. Yeah. So the great thing about that is you can check your altitude without losing your attitude, or check your airspeed, which on a standard steam can distract you really easily, right? 
<laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's awesome, man. The pre-takeoff is basically like normal. It's the pre-takeoff. It's yeah, identical. It's identical. The only big difference is before we go, we set our heading bug to the runway heading. And the heading bug is that little right knob here. there. Yeah. Or if I just tap it, it auto sets to what I'm, I'm on. Oh, it taps to the center. Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. All right. Awesome, man. So hopefully you guys found that as interesting as I did. I realize I'm a little bit late to the game. The G1000 is basically like 10 year old technology, which is kind of crazy. But this is really the first time I've had affordable access to one, so I'm definitely keen to check it out. Anyway, as usual, my disclaimer, I'm a private pilot doing my best to stay current and learn. I'm happy to share my self-analysis videos and any positive feedback is welcome. For more virtual ride-along flying videos, please subscribe and keep on keeping your flight chops sharp. Wherever you are in the world, share your aviation. Share aviation, a network for pilots by pilots.